Hello and welcome back to Mario Kart Wii last episode. We played through the Leaf Cup on 100cc and in this episode we're going to be playing through the Lightning Cup on 100cc and we are not going to be using Dry Bones like we uh, even though we unlocked him last time because the only new because we we also I want to use him with the new car we got for lightweight characters so we're going to save him for Tuesday. We are going to be using a very special character, me! Yay! We're going to be using the Sugar Scoot. Mail transmission, of course, and let's do the lightning cup. Let's do it. Alright, so I mentioned at the end of the last episode I was going to talk about Galaxy's Edge and the stuff that's in it in this episode, and I am going to do that, of course. Um, so, the Galaxy's Edge has two attractions, I'm sure you probably know at this point. It has the Millennium Falcon, Smuggler's Run, and then the Rise of the Resistance. Um, one of them is Mission Space on steroids, and the other one is... Um, it, it's a it's a trackless dark ride, and I don't... It's just... I don't know. It, uh, whatever. Um... So, we'll start with Smuggler's Run. Smuggler's Run is, like, it feels like it's trying really hard to be Mission Space and it's, it's not working. It's like, so, I guess if you had to criticize Mission Space, what you could say is that, well, you can't actually fail, right? Um, in fact, that, I actually can kind of relate to that just because when I took, uh, when my cousins came down here, uh, we took them on a Disney vacation. So, I, I as someone who is a resident expert, um, in, the, you know, all the Disney World stuff, I made it my personal mission to ensure that they had a fun time, and from what I can tell, it seems like they did, and they seem, they, apparently they talk about it a lot, so I am content to knowing that I helped them have a magical vacation. I, I know you're probably going to cringe hearing me say that, but I, I do hold it personally responsible, I, I would have held it personally responsible if they did or didn't have a good vacation, so there's that. Um, but the point here is that we, when we wrote Mission Space, um, the, they saw the video, and they said, I saw that they, you know, they, they saw, ooh, we get to, we get different tasks, we get to do different things, and then one of them asked, wait, does that mean, does that mean the ship can crash? Um, and the correct answer is no, right? It, it isn't actually possible for that ship to crash. No matter what, you will always make it to Mars, or if you're, if you, you if you do the green one, then you will always make it around the world, because it's basically what it is, it's soaring around the world. Um, but I didn't tell them that. I, I told them, yes, it is possible for the ship to crash. And there's a reason why I did that. I promise I wasn't trying, to, I, I mean, I was being deceptive, but I was, it was, there was a reason why. Like, I wasn't just trying to be mean for the sake of it. I, I was, they, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll explain it in the, in the, in the next race. So generally speaking, people take things more seriously when they believe that they, there is a possibility that they can fail. I think that's a fairly accurate statement. Um, so, if, because they asked, um, I figured that if I if, if I told them that it, it that no matter what you'll always make it to the end, it wasn't going to be very like exhilarating for them because because when you first go on there, you don't know for a fact that it's po it's not possible for you to crash, right? Um, and up, up until the point, every question that they asked, I was completely honest with them. I didn't lie about anything I didn't try. I may have tried to, like, you know, hype up an attraction or something, but not really. Most of the time, I was fairly, you know, level-headed and balanced. I wasn't, or, uh, unbiased, I guess I should say. I wasn't trying to say, like, this attraction's really good, you'll love it, or this attraction's really sucks, you'll hate it. I, wa I, met the, I let them make their own decisions, unless they directly asked me, what do you think of this attraction? Um, in which case, I would offer my opinion. Um... But most of the time they didn't do that. The only time which I out went out of my way to hype something up was for Flight of Passage, and that blew them. I saved that for absolute last. That was the last thing we did, and it blew them away. And I'm very happy that it did. Uh, but anyway, the point. The point. I'm getting sidetracked. 
So I, I told them, yes, it's possible to crash, and they immediately got excited. They're like, okay, this is serious. We got we got to figure out a strategy. So they were figuring out which of them, like there were four of us. My three, I had three cousins, and then it, there was me. So they, we, they were trying to figure out, okay, well, what's the best what's the best plan of attack here? Like, how do we do this? And they they all unanimously agreed um, that I should be the pilot um, because they, they their logic was, well, he's ridden it before, so he he knows what not to do uh, so that we don't crash, which is sound logic. If it had any weight whatsoever, um, so then beyond that point, um, they, they assigned their own roles, and then what, what was very funny is once we sat down, uh, one of them started pressing a bunch of buttons, and then they got mad at him. It's like, what are you doing? Stop pushing a bunch of buttons! And it's because it was funny because well, as soon as we took off, he started pushing buttons, and then things started going wrong. So, like, he pushed a, in the asteroid scene, he pushed a button, and then we lost autopilot. Um, or sorry, not with that. After the actual scene, he lost. We lost autopilot, and they're like, "Oh shoot, that wasn't. I, th was that supposed to happen? Like that? This is." And I, I didn't directly. I said, "This is. This is going horribly, horribly wrong," which is true. Um, so then we re engaged. I, I basically, long and short, is I made them think that we were actually in danger, and that everything was going wrong at every opportunity. Like that, you didn't have to. Like that, if you wanted to, you could have a perfectly solid flight to the to Mars, but that we didn't. Um, because that makes it more exciting, right? If it, if it, because if they believe it doesn't happen every time, it's like, oh, we did, we did this incorrectly. Now, now we need to fix it. So we worked together, you know, as if, as if it wasn't gonna happen anyway. To, um, to what's it? To, to, to beat the mission and to, you know, engage manual control, work together. When, when, when he, when they said all hands on the control sticks, their hands hit that control stick like in an instant because they were terrified of actually crashing. And then when we, because uh, ordinarily you can flip the stick in any direction and it wouldn't do anything. So I was trying to, I was scanning around seeing, okay, let's see if, if, if they do that, the immersion is broken, but they didn't, so that was good. And then when we got to the edge, um, I made a, I made a point of telling everybody, like, cause he, uh, the, 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 um, the, the new, new, the new woman who does the voiceover said, don't move a muscle. So then everyone listened and I said, okay, everyone calm, I'm going to bring us back into the starting position. And I pulled back the stick as we were starting to level out. So they thought I was actually doing that. And yeah, it was a little deceptive. But the way I see it, it, it enhanced their experience because they thought there were real stakes at hand. So I don't really feel bad about it. I think I think I think I did. I think I made the right decision there. What I would not have done, however, is lie in the reverse. Like, if the, if, if you were destined to always crash on Mission Space, um, and then they asked me afterward, was that supposed to happen? And I told them no. Like, that w I would never have done that, because that, because in, in, in the situation that actually happened, it's, yes, there is a possibility to crash, but we did good. We, we worked together as a team, and we solved the problems, and we made it to Mars successfully. That makes them feel good, right? But, um... In this case, or in this hypothetical, in this hypothetical situation, it would be like, "Wow, we screwed up, and now potentially we're going to be in a bad mood, or whatever, or like we're going to be disappointed because we failed to successfully beat the mission." Um, so that I, I wouldn't have done that. I, I I would say I did the correct thing, and because like again, if, if none of them asked, I never would have brought it up, right? I would have let them like if if they if nobody ever asked. A, is it possible to fail this? And I never would have said anything. But they asked, and I had to make a split-second decision, and I think I made the correct one. Uh, so, I will be content with that choice. It happened, actually, about a year ago at this point. Yeah, it's been about a year since since that little vacation. Okay, I throw your next banana. Throw it. Throw it. What, one more. What, no, Mario, you wasted my red shell. I was going to use it on Waluigi. Well, now I have to, now I, now I have to pass him the old-fashioned way. No problems there. Yeah, so we, we were, th this conversation got started talking about Star Wars Galaxy Days. Let's do that some more. Okay, that wasn't part of the plan. Um, the other ride, so, uh, the Smuggler's Run. Um, it's basically that, except that this time, rather than, that you, you can actually fail it, apparently. Um, I, I, I'd have to write it myself to, to see the validity of that. Apparently it's based on the skill of, like, how skillful are you? Da -da 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 -da. So I don't, I mean... Maybe it sounds interesting on paper. Like, like I said, the land itself and the stuff in it doesn't really bother me all that much. I'm, I may be personally biased towards it, but it, like, on paper, doesn't actually, it doesn't sound terrible. 
It's just that because of the principles and everything that surrounds the land's opening, I just can't, I can't get behind it. Like, I may go in there once to check it out. Well, I will say, though, the other thing that's good about Galaxy's Edge opening for Hollywood Studios is that it will help traffic flow, right? Because currently, there's a lot of dead ends in Hollywood Studios. There's the, um, there's, of course, the dead end coming from G Grand Avenue, which is really disappointing. You walk through the left side, you go past Star Tours, Mount of Vision, Mount of Courtyard. You hit Grand Avenue and you stop. Um, you go to Toy Story Land, you hit, go past Swirling Saucers, and you stop. Sunset Boulevard, you stop. I'm hoping, what I'm hoping they do is I hope they open up a, uh, I'm hoping they open up a, a, a path between I mean, Animation Courtyard and Sunset Boulevard, just to help with the flow of the traffic, because right now there's a lot of dead ends, so at least Galaxy's Edge opening will connect those two points and ho hopefully help the traffic, because all the other parks have really strong traffic flow. Animal, Animal Kingdom and Magic Kingdom are one, are big circles, so they, you know, traffic flows in a pretty normal pattern. Epcot is, a World Showcase is one big circle, and then Epcot, sorry, and Future World um, has the two ends of the park you can go to, and then I guess that also kind of flows in a semi-regular pattern, so it's, it, it's, it's hard to describe, but that also works well. Hollywood Studios, however, has completely wrecked traffic flow, so I'm hoping that Galaxy's Edge opening will at least mitigate some of that, because right now, when, people, when, when you start, when people start to rename your park Construction Land or Construction Zone or some, or Construction Studios, it might be time to cons to reconsider some of this, like, I don't know. It, it, it'll certainly be interesting, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But while we're on the subject, uh, another ride that we did that we kind of had a little bit of choice was with Test Track, because uh, earlier we couldn't uh, ride Test Track just because uh, it temporarily closed, because it seems like that ride temporarily closes a lot more than any other ride in Disney World. But, um, so later that night, um, uh, we finished eating dinner early, and our parents were still eating, so we figured we'd ask if we could go ride Test Track while they sat there and ate, and... Everyone was, they were fine with that, so we did, and we were test track first, we wrote, the, the standby line was a fairly long line, as always, but we, we were fine with doing single rider, so we just did that instead, and that allowed us, we, we got a minimized customization process, obviously, because, you know, it's, it's just, it's basically pick your design, or sorry, pick your, pick your design, pick which of the four you're most, you, you care about most, and then you win, um, or not win, but you, you it's, if you're going single rider, you don't really care about customization, you just want to ride the ride, right? That, that's that. Um, so, we did that, and then afterwards, they're like, hey, can we design a better car? And so, they had those design stations outside of the, like, at the exit of the ride, so that we sat there for a good, like, 20 minutes, I think, like, each trying to, t trying to fine-tune the car to see, like, on the next ride through, see if we could make it as good as possible. So, you know, it was just, just little moments like that made that, that whole trip was, was really fun. It's, it's, it's a very nostalgic memory, even though it was only a year ago. Like, I, it's, it's amazing how quickly I can build nostalgia. Like, I already have nostalgia for things that happened in April. I, I already have nostalgia for things that happened in May. And, and actually June, for that matter. So it's, it's, it's amazing how quickly things can build. And obviously, they get stronger as the years go on and as time pr progresses. But, you know, the nostalgia is still there. So it's, it's kind of fun. And, and you, you never really... Like, there's things, like, for instance, like, playing Sonic Colors, recording Sonic Colors... Um, over winter break is a nostalgic memory. I don't know why. Um, I, I it's just it's just the random some of the most random things. I don't know, but you know it's just whatever whatever sticks in my memory sticks in my memory. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. I it's really frustrating when I have something I really don't want to remember because the the blessing having a really strong memory is a blessing and a curse. It helps me with things like tests and all that. And it hurts me whenever I do something stupid that I really, really want to forget. Um, but I can't because my memory... Like, most people, from what I can tell, forget everything that happened over the course of a day. Like, their memory span is so pathetically short that something happens one day and then the next day they completely forget it, every, forget it even happened. It's like, it's, honestly, believe it or not, sometimes I actually wish my mind was like that because at least I wouldn't have to remember some of the some memories, like there's some things that I could just 
wipe the slate clean and start over again. I mean, not start, not, not start over again, but wipe the slate clean as in I forget that it happened so that I can, I don't have to, like, think about it, but, you know, so that's, just, that's, just, that's, just, that's just life. You learn to live with it. Uh, how did we get, wait, didn't, wait, didn't we start talking about Galaxy's Edge? How did we get on the topic of good and bad, okay, yeah, that's, it's amazing how conversation works. You start off with a topic that's seemingly normal, and then somehow, as you progress, you, it just gets progressively and progressively weirder, or, I mean, not always, but it, it's just weird how conversation flows sometimes. It's, it's always fascinating to see how you move from one topic to another. It's, I mean, maybe that interests me and only me. It's like maybe a whole lot of people just kind of go with the flow and don't really take a whole lot of time, spend a whole lot of time thinking about conversation and how it progresses, but, you know, just, just one of the things that interests me. Uh, but hey, we won. I, I feel like recently I haven't even been talking about the races that are happening at all. That, that's a massive lead that we had right there. That is a massive freaking lead. Okay. Well then. Um, all right, let's go to the award ceremony. You got first place. And another double starring. We are killing it recently. And of course, because it is another lightning cup, we are going to be treated to a special little sequence after the award ceremony. So, um, I'm going to call the episode off here. Uh, you might see me again afterwards uh, for the unlocks, but for now, yeah, actually, no, I'll, actually, no I won't call the, I'll, I'll call the episode off after the unlocks. Enjoy the bonus scene.
Congratulations! Do you want to send a commemorative photo to the Wii message board? Sure, why not? Sending to the Wii message board. The commemorative photo has been sent to the Wii message board. If you send too many... Yeah, 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 whatever. You scored a star ranking in the entire Retro Grand Prix on 100cc. Congratulations, you have unlocked Bowser Jr. You won the Lightning Cup on 100cc. Congratulations, you've unlocked a medium bike, the Zip Zip. You won trophies in all cups on 100cc. Congratulations, you can now play Grand Prix on 100cc, carts and bikes. And that's it for this episode of Mario Kart Wii. So thanks for watching, stay tuned for next time. I hope to catch you all tomorrow for some more Mario, or sorry, on Tuesday, for some more Mario Kart Wii. Goodbye.